powerful, not only just a powerful minister, but uh, just an incredible man, a powerful man, a strong man, yes. a man that just truly knows how to be a man of God, yes. and a husband and a father. I would like to work my husband, Robert Jones. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Father God. You're so worthy, Lord, Father God. You're so worthy. Omega, Lord God, Father God, the beginning and the end, Lord God, Father God, the author and finisher of our faith, Lord God, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, mighty God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Father God, for who you are, Lord God, Father God, in our lives, Lord God, Father God, for who you are, Lord God, Father God, the anointing that you have placed upon this, this place, this ministry, Lord God, the anointing that you have placed upon our pastor, Lord God, Father God, coming down to us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, mighty God, as you are the Alpha and the Omega. We serve you, Lord. We serve you. We thank you, Lord. In your mighty name, we pray. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in God's presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Was that was that an offering or what? Was that an offering or what? See, what I picked up from that was because i've gave before i gave and um when i when, when i've given my tithe and offering sometimes it doesn't happen that time if you that blessing that you want on the back of your offering envelope it doesn't happen immediately you know and i remember pastor was saying that um it just doesn't happen immediately it takes time once you plant that seed that seed that that seed evolves and it has to grow correct and what i've seen what um lex was saying that seed evolved it was she planted that seed and it evolved and it sprouted and it, and, and it just overtook her she has the children back and and, and it, but it's the anointing all right now it's the anointing yeah. that it's the anointing that she has yeah. we are we, we are attracted the people are attracted to us is because of the anointing that we have all it's right because now. the anointing that our pastor has and that has been passed down to us it's because yeah. of the anointing Hallelujah, Lord. The title of this message is called The Anointing. It's The Anointing. Where does this anointing come from? We're going straight into the word. Where does this anointing come from? Ask yourself, where does this anointing come from? See, it says 1 John 2 and 20, where this anointing comes from. Go ahead, if you have it with me, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, Father God. See, it says in 1 John 2 and 20, it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have an anointing from the Holy One. I'm coming from the Amplified Version. Thank you, Jesus. You have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart. You're not like everyone else. Ah, You're not yeah. like your friends, your buddies. You're not like your co-workers. You're not like your father. You're not like your mother. Oh you anointed. God. God gave you anointing, you, right? Yes. It says you have been set apart, specially gifted. And, 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 and been prepared by the Holy Spirit. You're, you're, you're specially gifted and, and been prepared by the Holy Spirit. Specially made. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us. Illuminates our minds and guards us from error. He right, guides us. He leads us. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. See, that's that Sophia. That's that wisdom from God. That's that That's that. That's that. With like Pastor said, every king and queen needs Sophia, right? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So that, that right there is, is your anointing. Your anointing from God, the Holy One. And it says... It, it, who, who is the maker of the anointing? God is the maker of the anointing, right? So I'm about to go down to, uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 1. I'm going to slow this thing down a little bit. Hallelujah, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord God. Lord God. See, what we, what we need to understand is that God put a, he sealed of a, a, a ownership on us. He, he sealed it. He said, I'm, I own you. Oh your mind, God. right? So it says, Second Corinthians 1 says, Now it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ, and who has anointed us, empowering us with the gifts of the Spirit. It is He who has also put His seal on us. He sealed it. It's done. That is He, that is, He has appropriated us and certified us as his he certified us Come on. he marked us you, 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 ever been, you know what certified means it, you're that's you that's him 
We belong to God. Yeah. Well, you, ever, you ever been to the store? You seen something that says what's it made out of? You seen the toy you get your child or whatnot made out of child made out of China? We're made from God. God made us. You got a certified mark on your chest. Yeah. You're made from God. So that's when you have that anointing. That's when you have that anointing. And it says, and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. So this is what he, this is, this was, this was his down payment. He get, he, he put a down payment, just like you put a down payment on your car. You put a, Anthony, you want to put a down payment on your house soon? You want to put a down payment, just like you put a down payment on your house, it's not going nowhere, correct? You put a down payment on your house, it's not going nowhere. Rob, he put a down payment on you, you ain't going nowhere. Pastor, he put a down payment on you, you ain't going nowhere. And has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge, like a security deposit to guarantee the fulfillment of his promise of eternal life. Of eternal life, a security deposit. A security deposit means it can't be touched with. You put a security deposit down, it can't be touched with. God put a security deposit on each and every one of us, knowing that we can't be touched with. Like it says in Psalms 105, 15, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. He, nothing can touch you. You're, you're already bought. You're paid for. You can't be taken. You're anointed. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Thank you, Jesus. See, the anointing. We're talking about the anointing. Yes, sir. We're talking about the power of the anointing. Yes, what the anointing could do, the benefits of the anointing. Yes. The anointing is the Holy Spirit abiding yes, in you. Lord. First John 2 and 27. It's, it's coming to an end, y'all. Y'all better get all this knowledge. Come on. First John 2 and 27. As for you, for you, he's speaking to us. He's speaking to each and every one of us. As for you, the anointing. The special gift, the preparation, which you received from his, from, from him, from him remains. Which you received from him remains permanently in you. It can't go nowhere. You are anointed. You can't. You can't go nowhere in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you. But just as his anointing teaches you, giving you insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit, go ahead and call out his name. He's going to give you the insight. He's going to tell you how to get things done. Because that's that Sophia, baby. That's that Sophia. That knowledge. That knowledge that surpasses doctors. That knowledge that surpasses magicians. That knowledge that surpasses judges. Anything you think you can think of is God's knowledge, God's wisdom, His Holy Spirit. It's giving you insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit about all things, everything. He will give you everything. And it is true and it is not a lie. Yes. And just as his anointing has taught you, you must remain in him, yes. being rooted in him, knit to him. You got to be rooted and grounded in this thing. You got to be rooted and grounded in this thing, right? Yes. That's the anointing. Before I close, it was it's a quick testimony I have, right? Yes, sir. For those that know, I'm, I'm going into the sheriff's program, right? I'm trying to um, become a sheriff, a deputy, correct? Yes, sir. I'm gonna be one of the top of the lines when I do, you know that? Yes, sir. Oh, um, because... So, I'm in this process, right? And through this process, Pastor's been, we, we've been on this kingdom uh, living still. Amen. And he was teaching us about the Sunesis, the Phronesis, and Sophia, right? And um, I, had, I had a medical exam. You know, you got to go through a few uh, things to get to where you want to go into the academy and stuff like that. So, in the medical exam, I passed everything. I passed the medical exam. And then the doctor hit me up like, yo, your liver enzymes are high. But but before that, I was going through a whole bunch of altercations with these people. <laughs> the anointing. Yes, they sir. see the they see the power. Because if they have one man like me in there, I'm gonna do so much. Yes, sir. I'm gonna do so much, right? Yes, sir. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So 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 he tells me, he says, You got your your liver enzymes are high. He's like, Do you drink? You drink a lot? I'm like, no, I'm not an alcoholic. You, you need to be an alcoholic to have some type of stuff, right? I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink like that. So he's like, 
Well, you need to go get checked because you may have hepatitis B and hepatitis C. I'm like, what? You kidding me? I didn't, I didn't, I rebuked it automatically. Oh, I cut the devil's oh head off. God. I said, no way. Oh, I serve a higher God because if a God is for you, who can be against you, right? Come on. So that's the anointing. See, what the anointing does, what the anointing does, it breaks every unequal yoke. That's what the anointing does. The anointing. What the anointing does, it can say, cancer, I rebuke you. You have no authority in my body. And what the anointing does, it makes sure that you are healed. What the anointing does, it makes sure that you can heal other people. This is what the anointing does. So when you understand the benefits and that you know what the anointing does, what the anointing could do from this place, from God pouring the anointing on that man right there, our pastor, coming down to us. We are anointed. And, 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 and it says right here in Isaiah 61 what the anointing could do. I'm not going to go in full detail because I'm going to leave this for you guys to read. But it's, I'm going to give you like one, two, three verses and you guys got to do the rest. It says Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has set me he has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, yeah. to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to physical and spiritual captives, captives and freedom to prisoners. That's what the anointing could do. Yes, sir. It could free the prisoners. Yeah. It could free them. This is what the anointing do. It can it can heal the brokenhearted. This is what the anointing do. This is what the anointing do. The anointing, see what the anointing could do, it can, it can tell you, hey, 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 uh, it, you know, it's, see, look, sometimes when I, when I think it's me, it's not. It's the anointing. When I think it's me that's working and um, doing uh, uh, different things, people are, are, are real satisfied with what I'm doing, it's the anointing that's on my life. It's the anointing that's been passed down to me. So with so with so with the with, with, with the testimony going forward, so I got the report saying you don't have nothing. You don't have no type of problems with your body. You don't have no hepatitis B. You don't have no hepatitis C because I serve the Almighty God. Because that's who I serve, not a to man. I can't do no things a to man. I gotta do everything according to His will, according to what He has me and what He has promised me. See, the anointing, it also travels down. It travels down to your generations, oh to your lineage, to your nation. Lotus is so anointed. She prays. She, she, she holds her, her sister's hand. She loves to pray. That's the anointing. That's the anointing that's been passed down to us, to our children. So once I had got that, that, that um, once I had got that, uh, that, 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 those results, letting me know that hepatitis B and hepatitis C is no longer in me is because I had I, I had spoke the word, I had spoken into existence. Yes. God had heard me. He said, "Oh yes, yeah, son, I know you believe me. So yes, let me sir. go ahead and do this yes, and move this for you, because you are my anointed one. Don't touch my anointed one. Did you just say that in Psalm 105? Do not touch my anointed one." prophets no harm that's because we can't be touched we can't be messed with that's because you got to use your sonesis your phronesis and your sophia oh, yes, sir. knowing that he will get you out of every situation because he will put you through a situation and two and three until you hit a big situation you'll hit a mountain that you've never seen before but then you have to realize where he got you out of and then you'll realize oh this ain't nothing this is nothing Nothing that our God can handle. Our God is too bigger than the problem. He's way bigger than the problem. There ain't no problem in my face. Boy, you don't have no hepatitis B or hepatitis C. You moving forward. Your academy starts in November 7th. Your academy starts in November 7th. Deputy Jones from here on now. Deputy Jones from here on now. Because of God and his anointing. Because of God is an anointing. Because of when you diligently seek him, he's a, he's, a, he's a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. You see, God and his righteousness first. His kingdom and his righteousness first. Then he'll pour out a blessing that you won't have enough room to receive. Thank you, Jesus. That's my message. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it.
at all, amen. God is good, amen. I had to take notes, amen, because that word was hidden, amen. See, when I came in this morning, I came expecting something, amen. When I came this morning, I started praying for a word from God, amen. I asked God to use everyone that's in this ministry to minister, amen. And Rob, you did that, amen. Definitely. Jones, you did that, amen. Deputy Jones, you have done that, amen. Powerful, powerful, amen. <laughs> Deputy Jones, amen. See, um, I thank you, amen, for, for praying with Anthony every day, amen. Because even when I call him, he's like, hold on, I got to call Rob. Amen? And I'm like, hold on, what you mean? We got a prayer time. What you talking about, amen? But see, when my, they both are going to work, amen. They hit, they on the freeway heading to work and they're praying, amen. So I'm blessed beyond measure. I ask God for a man that serves God. I ask, man, I ask God for a man that praises God and that will reference God in our relationship. And this is where he is today, amen. Anthony, minister, excuse me. Amen, because he was the top of his class, amen. Amen. <laughs> I, I was a little jealous that he was with me in class. He knows it. But I thank God for that, amen. I thank God that a man will sit here and listen to pastor in his direction, amen. I thank God for a man that will wake up before I wake up to give God glory, amen. He the foundation, amen. So give it up for Minister Anthony Powell and be perfect, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just praise him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the anointing. The anointing over our lives, Father God. For the teaching of your word, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way today, Father God. Have your way, Father God. Increase every person in the atmosphere, Father God. Increase the words of my mouth, Father God. Increase each minister, Father God. We thank you and praise you this morning, Father God. We just praise you this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Without you, it cannot be done. We thank you, Father God. And in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and praise you, Father God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I may be happy to see you guys. We. What a few weeks, what a month this Come has on. been. Come yeah, on. this has been crazy growth. Crazy growth, crazy faith. Come on. Come on. Ooh, I got to get right in this word because, you know, I've been getting fought all night, all morning because God put this on my spirit and I was really convicted. I'm like, I don't know if I should, if I should say this, but God keeps telling me I got to speak on it. Right. And it was something I'm personally going through. And I'm like, this is, it's hard to talk about because, you know, we, as Christians, we have to follow God completely. So, the title of my message is, Are You Ready for the Gospel? Are you ready for the gospel? Have you ever woke up one day and found yourself just pissed and confused? Like, I'm just mad. I don't know why I'm mad, but I'm mad. What is going on? Like, you know, like, I'm just pissed off, confused as all heck. I don't know what's going on, right? You're trying to figure out what is, what is it? Or do you find yourself justifying reasons to, to stay distracted from talking right to God? Now, right now. Like, you know, oh, my Instagram or whatever. Or I got to go do this really quick, so I'll, I'll talk to God later. Or, you know, I got to go run here real quick, so I'll, I'll pray in a few minutes, God. Yeah. Do you find yourself ever having these situations where you keep putting all these things in front of God? Come on, Anthony. Because it happens when we get so busy that we, we, we replace what we're supposed to spend time with God for and put it for other things and things that we want to do. Right See, it's true because at so many times I found myself knowing I need to pray or talk to God or, or set time apart for Him. Amen. But I find something else that it seems to be more important at that moment because this, this matter is pressing and it's time consuming or it's time pressing, right? So how many things are you justifying? These distractions keep you from God. All right. Turn to Luke. Luke chapter 10. And we're going to go through 38 through 42. And this is something about distraction too. This is when Jesus was um, doing miracles across and he was going back to Jerusalem and he had stopped into um, a lady's house named Mer uh, Martha. Martha, sorry. So, say amen when you get there. Amen. Because this has really been convicting me hard lately. It's been convicting me so hard. The more I've been reading the word, and Pastor's been saying it for years, read the word for yourself. Go get it for yourself. Yes. Hear the word, but go read it for oh, yourself. Yes. And when I start reading and piecing everything together, my pastor's been on it for so... Man, Pastor, you've been 
You've been so on about this for so long. I appreciate Amen. you, Pastor. I appreciate your true teaching of the word. I thank you for this great foundation here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So go to Luke 10. Here we go. So while they're traveling, he entered into a village. And this is from the Christian Standard Bible. And he entered a village, this is Jesus, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. So two sisters, the Lord comes into your house in the flesh. Come on. Amen. And your sister goes and sits by his feet. All right. And so listen to what he's saying. Listen to what the man of God is saying, right? And then it goes here, it says, But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. And she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? So tell her to give me a hand. You see, she's looking at somebody else and getting upset and distracted because she has these little things she has to do, whatever it is, and getting mad at someone who's actually listening to God right there. All these little tasks are so in the way that when someone's getting the word, you mad at them getting the word. You looking at some of those situations and getting mad at them when they're doing the right thing. Okay? And she went to the Lord and said, God, tell her to come help me. Don't, no, tell her to come help me. So the Lord answered and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Many things you are worried and upset about. But one thing is necessary. One thing. And Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken from her. So your, your things you're worried about do not matter right now because his word is more important than your little distractions, from your little Instagram account, from your little worry and poop of things that are keeping you from me. Why are you looking at her? Come listen to me. She has the right idea. She knows. She knows to listen. So why are you worried about what she's doing? Come sit down next to her and listen. You're missing the whole point. Don't worry about these trivial little things. Come on. Help Come on. Come on. Jesus. You see, we get so distracted by these little things. It's so easy when you're so busy, when you got work or school and children and tasks and finances and worrying about money or, or worrying about paying your bill on time or whatever. And you forget about God's in control of all of this because he gave you all of it. Come on. He gave you every single thing you have. You don't keep putting it over him. Come on. It's in the time. Are you ready for the gospel? Are you ready to rely on in truth and the spirit in every single situation? Are you ready? Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Or does your faith continue to waver? Does it continue to waver when situations come up? You see, turn to Matthew. Yes, yes. Because we are in Matthew. It's going to be in Matthew. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Anthony. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Because so, right at this point, see, this is right at the time when Jesus just fed 5,000 people, men and families, right? With, was it five loaves and two fish? Amen. And putting miracles in front of the disciples' face. Like, literally, a big old miracle of feeding that many people in front of your face. In front of your face, right? And he told them to go ahead and go forth. I'll meet you later. So the disciples get on a boat. And they're going... Traveling along and it's windy and crazy. It's looking kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. Whoa, wait, 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 hold on. We just seen some miracles, but God, what, well, hold on. Why is it? We about oh, to God. die out here. What's going on? Oh, and then Jesus comes out on the water. And so Peter was scared. Like, whoa, is that a ghost? No, it's Jesus, fool. No. But then so Peter, said, Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is you, order me to come out to the water. And Jesus said, come on. Do you believe? Come on. So Peter got down off the boat and he started to walk on water with Jesus. Think about all the things you can do when you actually rely on God completely. When you actually focus on him completely. Look at the miracles that happen. Right? So he's walking on water, right? Amazing miracles. But then he noticed a strong wind and he was frightened. That fear so said, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, this is crazy. I'm looking at everything else. This is looking way too big for Jesus who's right in front of me. Oh, oh my gosh, what is going on? Oh my gosh. And then, and then he began to sink because you took your eyes off God. You took your eyes off God to look at everything else. And then you start to sink and then say, God, help me. Help me. Help me. But thank you, Jesus has a humble heart. Come on. And Jesus reached out and caught his hand. 
But he said to him, you who have so little faith, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt after I just fed 5,000 people in front of you? Why do you doubt anymore? See, we get miracles, but then the devil tries to throw these things that look so big compared to what the miracle just happened five minutes ago. What does the word tell you? Come on, Anthony. It shows you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. Right now. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Because we look at all these things and it seems like they're so big for a moment. Yeah. But you don't realize how big God is compared to every single yeah. tiny moment. Yeah. Come on. Are you going to really rely on him? Are you ready for the gospel? Are you ready? Are you ready for the gospel? Are you ready to rely on him in every single situation, circumstances? Are you ready to fully rely on him? Are you ready? Because the time is now. The time is now to spread the gospel. The time is now. We don't have to wait no more. God gave us the Holy Spirit. He left us a gift. It is time to spread the gospel. But are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready or will you be lukewarm? Will Come you on. waver in the in the midst of a storm? Or will you stay steadfast in where God told you to go? Come on, Anthony. Will you stay steadfast and look at God and say, I'm going to go there regardless of what it looks to the left and the right? And I don't know what it looks like because I ain't going to look any Come other way except towards you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Yes, sir. Let me get some water. Hold on. Come on, take your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. See, because this was something I was dealing with. This is something that I was happening to me personally. Come on. Where I would look at some and I know and I know God in my life. Come on. I know God in my life. Yes. But sometimes when your flesh just starts hitting you and things look crazier. Than what you know to do. You need to go back to this word right away and study. Right. That's why Pastor been saying, study the word for yourself. You hear it, you hear it, you read it, you read it, you hear it, you hear it, and then it sets into your soul, into your heart, into your subconscious, and you don't have to think about the situation because you know what God already told you. You don't have to doubt anymore. You don't have a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Bring and remember the scriptures on the spot. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father God. Because sometimes you need to repent for the things that you put in front of God. The idols of your bill, that is an idol. Your bill is an idol if you put it over what God can do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every situation that you put over God is an idol. So idol yourself to think, what are you putting over God? What are you putting over God? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want everybody to stand to their feet. We're going to do something a little different today. And I want everybody to come, come to the altar. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And right now, we're going to touch and agree. We're going to touch and agree for repentance. For anything we've unconsciously done, we put over God. Anything we might do in the future. Thank you. We're just going to pray. We're going to pray on a heavy language right now. We're going to give him praise, Father God, for all the multitude, Father God, for the things that you're working out right now in our favor, Father God, that every doubt and worry we cast to you, Father God, every situation that we might even think about is not you, Father God, we cast it to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We lift you up in glory, Father God, because it is you, Father God, that is making the way out of the storm, Father God. We thank you for removing things, Father God, removing anything and clearing our eyes, our mind, our spirit, Father God. Let us be filled up with the Holy Spirit right now, Father God. Let us be on one accord, Father God. Let us continue to strive for you in truth and the spirit, Father God. We thank you, Father God, the remembrance of the word, Father God, for bringing the word and truth, Father God. It shall pass whatever you say in your word shall pass, Father God. It is because of you, Father God. Let us not be distracted by anything, Father God. Anywhere the devil tries to attack us, Father God. Let us, let us have the Holy Spirit remind us of how we way, Father God, when it looks like it's good or it feels like it's good, but it's not of you, Father God. Let us bring the remembrance of what you said, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, for clearing our minds, Father God, for clearing our spirits, Father God, for clearing our emotions, Father God, for clearing our bills, Father God. We thank you and praise you, Father God, for the abundance of wealth, Father God. We thank you and praise you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We 
just thank you, Father God. Because without you, Father, it could not be done, it could not be done, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God, for your word, the studying of your word, Father God. For your word speaking the truth to our hearts, Father God. Speaking the truth to our hearts, Father God. I don't know if it's just for me, Father God, but I need this word, Father God. I need this word every day, Father God. I need to study the word every day, Father God. Spend time every day, Father God. Not put anything above you, Father God. So we thank you, Father God. Continue to forgive us, Father God, for the things that we've done, Father God. Unintentionally, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God, for forgiving us, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for everybody who's groomed in the ministry, Father God, under the word of you, Father God. Under the word and the truth of you, Father God. So we thank you and praise you, Father God. For this ministry, Father God, and for the people to speak into us, Father God, to speak the truth into us, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' mighty name we pray and thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's keep praising them. Keep praising them. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Let's praise him for the grace and mercy right now. For the grace and mercy, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you right now. We praise your holy name right now. We lift you up, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for everything we're going through, Father God. He's going to make us perfect on the other side, Father God. He's going to allow us to minister to somebody else, Father God. Deliver us, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God. We humble ourselves to you, Father God. We bow down and submit to you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for any distractions removed right now, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let me tell you something, my message was, this was not, <laughs> God was really putting this on my heart. Um, and I really had to speak this because this is what I was going through, honestly. Amen. This is what I was really going through. And it's hard to admit that, but it's the truth. You know, and I need to, I need to say it because in order to, to get past that, I have to, to let it out. Amen. You know, I can't just sit here and pretend like it's not happening. You know? Because we all go, we all have uh, trials and tribulations we're going through. Yes. And it happens sometimes where we don't even realize what we're doing. Amen. But the studying of the word will show what you're doing. Yes. So thank you, Father. Thank, thank, you, Lord. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you might need an extra prayer. The ministers are going to come up right now to the altar. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Let's Lord. Lord. praise and let's give God the glory. He alone is worthy to be praised. We serve the great God. And besides him, there is no other. He's our Alpha, our Omega, our beginning, our end, our first, our last, our all in all. He's everything. Amen. And with him, we can do anything. Amen. Amen. So I'm just here to tell you, keep doing what you're doing. Our of love. This I am so godly proud Amen. of these young men and yes, women. Sir. I am so godly proud. Oh man, I'm so godly proud of what God is doing. Did you feel yes, the anointing yes, from these young men? Yes. They, they, these young men were here six before six thirty. Some of them got here before six thirty yes, in the morning yes, yesterday. Sir. Worked all day long. Yes, sir. Yes. Went out and did ministry. Yes, sir. Come in here this morning. Amen. Before 8 30. Yes, sir. Praying. Yep. Seeking God. Yes, we got sir. some kind of men right yes. here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we got men second to none around here. Young men with ministry. The anointing of Almighty God resting in their lives. And God is doing great work. Men with families, young men with families, their own homes, several businesses, yeah. jobs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That's what God is growing. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what God is growing here. 
And what did James Brown say? It's a man's world, but it wouldn't be what? Nothing without a woman. Yes, sir. Thank God for these women around here. Come on. Work just as hard as the me. I mean, young people serving God. Living for the Lord. Building the kingdom. Yes, sir. Preaching second to none. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And uh, Elder Jones, I just want to tell you, man, God is taking you someplace. Amen. 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 You haven't stopped. You're getting ready to. Hallelujah. Lord. That's where you're going. Up. You. You're getting ready to go up. Amen. We thank God for your life, for bringing us this young man. Right yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. I said elder because yes. there's still a lot of knowledge. Amen. That you still go pouring in. Hallelujah. And God is putting you in a place where you would, as high as he go, you go. As high as he go, you go. As high as he go, you go. Because he ain't through with you, God. You just get a start. You just get a start. You hear me? You just get a start. Hallelujah, Lord. Nicole, God told me to tell you, girl. That there's a refreshing coming in your home. Thank you, Lord. It, it, it's gonna be like a, a, a spring cleaning when you just Thank clean you. everything. You uh, the win winter has passed, Amen. and you open up all your windows, and you just clean your whole house up. Yeah. That's what's happening in your home, yes. spiritually. Hallelujah. There's a refreshing coming in your home to where everybody that walks into your home will feel that refreshing. They're going to tell you, girl, it feels so good and fresh in here. There's a refreshing coming in your home, in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. There's a refreshing. You're going to have new energy, new strength. A whole renewed love. You thought you loved before, but you're going to have a whole renewed one because God is going to give you the wisdom on who to share that with. You won't be wasting your time. Casting your pearls. Amen. You understand? Jesus. He's going to give you a wisdom that's going to blow your mind. You're going to know when to talk and when to not say nothing. You're going to know who to help and who to leave alone. Because there's a refreshment in your house. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Mother, how have you been? I've been just fine, just fine. Thankful for the Lord. Just Amen. Everything I've lived has been with the love of God. I understand. I'm just so happy to be here because Anthony did not ask me. Yeah. He texted his brother <laughs> who woke me up and said, you got to get up. All right, man. All right. He said, I have nothing to wear. He took everything out the closet. He, I said, well, my hair. He went and found the wig. <laughs> See, I am so happy to be in the house of the Lord, and I want to say this and sit down. Visions for here, visions for you. Yes, Don't they tarry? Yes. Wait on them. Yes. I receive you, Mother. Hey, glory to God. Hey, glory to God. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. It's so big. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, I needed that, Mother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God has given us so much vision, I can't only see it sometimes. It's just so much. But I received that. I needed that. Amen. 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 Come on, Lisa. Let's take us out. Let's take us out with some... Praise music, huh? Let's go, let's go out shouting, giving God the glory, taking the Lord along with us everywhere we go, sharing God's love everywhere we see people, just giving God the praise and the glory for all the great things that He's done in our lives. Come on, let's give Him praise. Let's give Him praise. Let's give Him praise. Let's give Him praise. Let's give him praise.